We on, on, on. We on, on, on. <laughs> Don't on, let you me ever... sure I got all my shit. You got to say, yeah. Yeah. Lighter. Yeah. Lighter. Coffee. What I'm missing. You got your yeah. You got your yeah. You got your yeah. You got your yeah. We on, on, on. You hear me? That's New Orleans talk for you right there. That's a straight end of shit. Dog, yeah. you ever notice? I, and I just noticed this shit this morning. You ever notice that brothers never hire your brothers? Like, any brothers you going, right? You talking you, about the brothers, the store? Yeah, where you get the chicken from mm-hmm. and all that. Like, brothers never hire, like, bro, like black men. You don't never see a black man behind a register of brothers. It's one, uh, you know, all of them come from. I don't know what country. I ain't just gonna blur the country out. Right. But I do know Brothers is run by one of them. And they get one of them. Right. And I know for the most part, they be getting all their people from home. So they spend a lot of money getting their people from home, getting them green cards and all that shit, and then they employ them. So if you notice, it's most of them behind the counter, and then they go around and hire the black woman. But yeah. Well, why do you think they hire only black women? Like why you don't never see like white women working at brothers? You don't see like a Mexican woman really working at brothers like that. Like it's mostly black women. I have been seeing a few Mexican women. I but all of them, all of them fine. Like well, that's the answer to your question. <laughs> uh, stay eye candy to look at. Cause one, they they get the the men. They get the men to come first. The right. wives and the children still at home. Right. Cause every time you pull up, they still or whatever it is. Right. So. They wives and shit still at home, and so. Uh, but we never seen that approach out of the like the um, the um, the Asian community. Like when they when they started their stores, they didn't employ the black woman or the black man. They they went strictly family. They even had their babies at the register some of the times. But this morning I go in the store and I see the black girl. And it's always a, a nice little pretty black girl back there. And I'm not hating on the black women at all. Like, I love the, that they get the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But the name of the store is Brothers. And I'm like, I never see, I never only see brothers spending money in this motherfucker. <laughs> well, it was probably founded by real brothers. Two brothers. Well, yeah, but brothers is brother. We brothers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they you ain't know, talking about it, the brother. But, 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 just, but just so happened. The the two words are are like kinda like you know, like they mean each other. Like Well it ain't the And the fact that you that you in our hood. The fact that we the only ones spending money though, you know. Well they only in our environment. And like they in Metairie. Well they out there now, they 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 moving. And you know, shout out to everybody that like that chicken and all that, but that's just something to look intro, out bro. for. That's just something to look out for. Oh, yeah, we live in Benjamin's room. We're straight into it. <laughs> this Benjamin's room, episode six. You hear me? You hear me? Episode six. We've been doing this for a little minute. You did. We live in Music Box Studios. You did. Wow. Brothers, enough of how you brothers. God damn, that shit just took me for a loop, bro. Fire marketing. Fire marketing. I can't lie. And, 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 and shout out to the community for um for eating that hot chicken. You did. Um, what you did this week, bro? Jazz Fest. What it, what happened at Jazz Fest? Was it like normal shit? Like every time you go to Jazz Fest, is it just Jazz Fest? Because you're a musician. Like, is it just Jazz Fest? Or uh, like, the Jazz Fest has changed. Uh, it's almost twenty, thirty thousand people in that bitch, and you know how that's different from from past. Uh, it's almost twenty, thirty thousand people. That's a that's a lot of people, and maybe twenty nine, twenty eight thousand of them white. It's more black folks working than attending because the price is out. Because of the price is out. It's like a big tourist attraction now. That's interesting. Like, I, I, I enjoy myself, but, you know, you always watch your surroundings and you're like, man, this shit is real white. 
You ever go to a restaurant and be like, damn, I'm the only one? Right. I got those vibes. Wow. Now, on Sundays, you know, every the last Sunday every year is Franklin uh, and Brevet. Uh, um, excuse me, Maze and Franklin, uh, Franklin and Beverly. Right. And they always close out the show. Right. You can always guarantee that it's gonna, that's going to be black, right. which it was. Right. And, uh, you know, they had a little Mexican band, uh, Spanish band, and it was a bunch of white people. As soon as they finished, they left, and it was all brothers. <laughs> so the $90 a ticket, the ticket was $90. Mm-hmm. So that's $90 for each time you go, or $90 mm-hmm. for the whole thing? $90 per person per day. So, all right, so that makes sense. Instead of black people um, paying for all these days, we just going to go on the black day. Is which is Frankie Frankie the, the, all the black like people said, pay for that nine dollar ticket. They they kind of do a good job with putting some of those black artists in there. They had Erica Badu. They had Buster Rhymes on Frankie Day. Nah, every day was a different. All right, all right, all right, uh, all right. I think I was there Thursday. Buster was there that Thursday. Um. I forgot who did Friday. Erica Badu was Saturday. Frankie, that Sunday. Right. I caught Charlie Wilson the weekend before Charlie. that. I done seen Charlie Wilson like five Charlie. times. Charlie, that dude. The so, show not. It's the same show. I like. I kind. I kind of. But wanna... you, you always love his music. But me as an artist and a performer watching the show, I was like, man, give me something different. Right. But he, Charlie, what else is he gonna give you? A different show. So it was like the exact same show? New costumes. He changed the costumes this year, but it's the exact Dance same show. The same. Man, I know them bitches. <laughs> you ever, when a uh, new edition come on, you be, it's like, I know where they going. I was like, all right, going to hit them. Yeah. Drop a bomb on me. I know Charlie, that bitch. Yeah, right. Charlie, Charlie. Dog, what? I don't know, bro. Like, I heard a lot of people say, I'm not going to Jazz Fest because the $90 tickets. And I don't know. Like, I don't know if, like, I don't, I know everything going up right now. Gas they, going up. They priced out the black community. I can, I can but, say that. But but you think it's because everything going up? Or do you think it's a race component? Because I don't know. We always feel like, as black people, I think we feel like, we always feel like there's, there's some type of race component because of the past. How they, you know, you know how you price. The clubs do that. So peep this up. I got a family of four, me, my wife, two kids. Mm-hmm. For each day that I go, it's supposed to cost me $400. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, we done went as a group this year maybe three times. Right. $1,600. Well, no, $1,200. $1,200. Who can afford that? Right. I'm okay, but I'm not about to pay that. And what average black family going to be able to afford that? That, that means but who, what? Who wants to? But what? What black that that take that experience from a black kid to ever see that? I remember. I don't know if it was you. Or that was Cole, me. That uh, was saying before Katrina. That sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars. The whole so, family could have got in for a dollar. Right. Right. That's 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 a big change. And now you're gonna go up in there. You're gonna. I eat. wonder if the artists getting paid more. I wonder. Like I wonder. I wonder with such a price raise, right? As an artist, performing artist that did Jazz Fest. They don't have like family group ticket thing? They have specials. Yeah, but damn. But it ain't about to be 50% off. They might take 10, 15 max. You get your shit early enough, they'll, you know, slide you a couple of dollars off. Well, I, um, episode five dropped on Mother's Day, mm-hmm. right? And... I woke up that morning, I called my mom and all that. I seen everybody posting their mom, right? And I'm always conflicted on Mother's Day, Father's Day, because I'm a con I'm a, I'm a conscious brother. So it's like I hate getting caught up in that type of shit. It's doing what everybody else do. Right. But you gotta do something. So I like, I'd rather do something private. You know what I'm saying? For the women in my life, you mm-hmm. dig? All the mothers in my life, you dig? Like, I'd rather do something private than try to, try to like... Impress the world? Yeah, bro. Or even just let them think, was know what's going on. I still believe in privacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I know in this type of world where you post everything and everybody know everything about everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, privacy is something that we should value more. 
You know, everything shouldn't be online. Everything not for everybody. Like, some of these moments are for you and your family. Like, everybody shouldn't experience it. Mm-hmm. It's not their place. So, you know, like, I post my mama the next day. Like, <laughs> mama Monday. <laughs> you dig? Because I was like, oh, some shit, like, just on some, I don't know, defiant shit. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't like doing what everybody else do. Like, just because they did it, that mean I have to do it? Facts. I I can't. You, you think that's defiant? You think because we rebels or some shit? <laughs> it's not rebels. It's just we we know who we are. Right. We know who we are, and we not looking for validation online. Like, let me put this. Let me see how many likes I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I only got this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. Well, they did this. They got 100. Oh, this did 500. I'm not looking for that validation or your approval. Right. Right. Uh, Some shit I post, mainly the shit I post these days is about business. And I might throw some happy shit up there, but I ain't throwing my sad shit up. Not I have sad days. I have bad days. I'm not posting that shit. Who does? Right. Uh, And Mother's Day, that ain't a good day for me. Right. You did? Right. Depending on what side of the field you're on. And that's the other thing, that's the other part of why, like, I don't know if... A Father's Day and Mother's Day and these type of um, holidays, I don't know if they even cause more positive than they do negative feelings. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. people have enough um, problems dealing with the trauma of their lives. And them days like that, that, that like everybody focusing on this one thing. And we are heard, we are heard people. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So things that's going on in our environment are going to affect us. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think they even consider that. They just consider the market. Like I'm not saying that me seeing those posts just remind me and like, oh, I'm about to have a bad day. They posting their mama. No. Uh I learned how to turn that shit off. Like, but it's a the- constant. It's yeah. it's not like Oh, you see one thing. It's like, man, this shit everywhere. Yeah. So and then it's gonna so, last a day and the two after that. And then for women, it make them feel even more because they are already <laughs> emotional creatures on some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if these days, you know, like happy Mother's Day to the mothers and everything. Everybody that celebrate and sign up for that. Um it it always brings conflicted feelings for me. But not just holidays. Uh you know, there are couples out there that get into it because their significant other won't post them, period. Right. They might see this person where they always posting their person. Why you can't do that for me? Right. Um, Social media got, a, I don't know, a lot of people messed up in the head behind that shit. I, I, have, a, I have a saying for that. And is um comparison is the devil. Yeah. And, and 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 having your phone and I go through things like that um a lot when it comes to comparison because you look at people that you and, and you look at and you compare your life and daily relationship all these relationships are different. You mm-hmm. they don't try but women and uh, like relationships and when you're dealing with women, relationships, holidays they gonna always force your hand as a man to do some shit that you don't want to do. You they like you don't want to buy this four hundred dollar purse for Christmas, but you gotta do it. It's Christmas, and you gotta have that bitch on Christmas, and you gotta have it wrapped a certain way. And like, it's always gonna be a conundrum, bro. And the marketplace just find very very clever ways to. To, to put men in corners, bro. I don't know why. I don't know why, bro. I don't know why. If we was Muslim, would we have this conversation? Nah, because they don't have those type of problems. They don't have them type of problems. On a lo- look, on a local, on a local level, news wise, right? Um, going through Nola dot com, searching the internet, and I, I came put a put across this article about um. The school board. Mm -hmm. And it's saying that the school board voted not to take the charter system back. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to to, to take the charter system Mm -hmm. and not to take the power of the school board back. And only one person voted to take the the, the power back from the charter school system. And that was um, Nolan Marshall. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, you know uh, of Nolan Marshall from... 
photography. Photography. Um, I looked him up and they said he was he was a um he represented the seventh district. Um, he kind of stand up for our kids and. He for the community and, and New Orleans culture. Yeah. You hear me? So salute to Nolan Marshall for, for doing for, the right thing, for, for doing your job, for, for stepping up and doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I I thought about the charter system. We both have kids in school. Mm-hmm. Um, how you feel about one app charter systems? The, the whole process as a whole as a parent. When life got better, I immediately put my kids in private school because I was tired of dealing with that shit. Right. Right. Immediately. Right. And I'm not going back. So so what do you what what advice would you give a parent that don't have that choice? Honestly, we didn't have that choice when we was growing up. We went to public schools. Right, but we ain't have like with the We had better we went to school education. I, I, we kinda went to district schools though. We kinda went to school where we live. So, like, if you lived in this area, you, you went to this school. Like, you didn't really have a lot of people. Luckily, I I went to McMain and I went to Easton. So, I went to pretty decent schools when I was going to school during that time. Because I remember getting the person address, like, oh, all right, I'm going to use my AT address to go, because I won't go here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, But with the, with the one app and the way the charter schools work, they kind of— like your child just you don't know where you yeah you don't know where your child going to and if he gets sent to F school or D school which most of these schools are becoming you just got to live with that shit and that shit ain't cool and my son's school closed down and it's like um we was I think we was like on Mardi Gras break or something and it came on the news that the school was closing down but the school they fuck I'm sending them to school every single day. They didn't tell us shit. <laughs> like we seen, but but it was because of the numbers. Like they wasn't getting the money. They wasn't getting. They they. If you don't get the children, you don't get the money. Mm-hmm. So now all the schools fighting for the children through the, the one pool. app and through these charter systems to get the bread. Now they're gonna force them all into a certain amount of schools so they can get that bread so they can meet the quota. I have a partner that recently moved from here to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Went to North Carolina and uh, found someone to stay, and then he had to find out about the school system. So talking to uh, talking to the people out there, you know, trying to find out about the schools, he was like, you know, where are the bad schools so I can stick away from that? And the people looked at him like he was crazy. He was like, you know, the bad schools, you know, we don't, we don't want to stick away from them. He was like, there is no bad school out here. We immediately, when we go to schools, we trying to find out where not to send our kids because that's what we have to deal with out here. But my man, he moved. Right. And the school system totally different. Do they have charter schools out there? Is it like a charter system? I don't system? know. But the thing is, out there, he was like, well, out here, you know, you send your kid to the school where he specializes in. Where they got this school where if he specializes in science and math, they got this. Right. Uh, if he's an arts, if he like arts, we got this school over here. They got schools that's catered for those for different type of kids, and that's where you send your cow, uh, your child, where he's better suited. Right. Oh, uh, like I don't know, dog. Like the charter system kind of took away the personalization of school. Like, um, I drop. Oh, uh, I used to be dropping off my son at school. You can't really like walk him to the class. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. Um, go in and sit in class. With like, I come, I come from that era of well, if a parent, you might be doing your work and be like, oh, we have a parent, yes. parent popping up in them. Or bitches. your mama might pop up, uh, pop up to the window. And now you gotta, right? Your mama watching you through the crack of the door. Like, yeah. I come from that time mm-hmm. where the parent, the teacher, and the child all had a relationship, mm-hmm. and that relationship is very important. And it's a personal relationship. I will say, now that I'm in the private sector, I do have that relationship. Right. And when I seen it, and I was like, oh, we've been missing this. Right. I was so happy when I went to, uh, we was looking at schools, you know, to find the perfect school. And uh, I remember the first private school we went in, they they took us around the class, brought us in the halls. And my nigga, I seen books. 
like real, you know, like books like we used to have. Right. Like the school books. Right. I ain't seen a school book since my children been in school. Right. When the last time your child bought a book home, a school book? They don't. Never. I walked into school, I was like, oh shit, y'all got books? Nigga, that shit excited me. Right. Because they had books. Right. Right, it bring you back. Like we we lose a, we we losing a lot with this charter. Thing, I don't bro. know if that shit really hit people just now. Think about that shit, son. But it, I, a book, right? The, the school books. But I think that's kind of outdated, though. But w- they not on computers in school. They not. Are they? They give them like little worksheets and shit. Now. Everything is a worksheet, right? The kids don't even have a book. Right. Now you got it. Now you, the kid got a test. What do you got to study? These worksheets? I, I think, book went home every single day. Well, I think a lot of times um, when you talk about the changes that we see in these schools, I don't think, I, I think the changes come so fast and rapid, it's hard to attack all of them, right? But my nigga, I'm talking about a book, the school book. Right. Like what more... Like I said, that's an outdated thing, really, because you got so much information right here on your little tablets and all that shit. Yeah, but that's at 3.30 once you get out to school. Right. Them kids not on them computers at school like that. Right. Now, mine, the one that says, hey, no, I know he on the computer every day because I had to spend $1,200 to make sure he had a certain type of computer that they required him to have. Right. Well, now they they, um, they running a campaign saying erase the board. Like... We don't need the school board. Like they, they want to erase the board be, because the the miss because of the job that they've been doing. Right and now they passing the book. I don't know, bro. Cause like um, my son just got into Easton. You did. Is 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 a which is uh, good. It's only it's only a hand few now. It's one hand of good schools out here. Uh, what about the rest of these kids? Because at the end of the day, that's going to affect our community because the kids, they just running rampant at this point because... The city, the government, the United States, the White House, whatever. They know this shit, son. If me and you able, and we just little old nobodies, and we able to talk this shit out, you don't think they've been talked that shit out? So now it's up to us to... Get ourselves out that shit. But they basically selling our kids. Like, yeah, like, their like, number. Like, you can't, you, you, it, there's no way around it. They selling our kids and they selling our kids out. They not, um, they not providing the things that, that they could provide that, that, there's, that money is, is not a money thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the things that they can provide that they don't, um, a lot of the miscommunication. A lot of the, um, like, all the shit that been going on with these schools, bro. Like, like all of it is just, is, is, is getting weird. You know what I'm saying? And it's time for us as parents to come together and vote vote for our kids' future and organize. Like, we got to start having these community meetings. So a lot of that, uh, and like you said, we have to vote. And it's just not for that shit. The problem is we're not voting for the local shit. Right. When we don't vote for the local shit and our number's low, they say, all right, well, it ain't that many people staying in this area. So we ain't going to give this neighborhood as much resources as we would give the Kenner or the Metairie neighborhood because they going to all come out and vote. So that's why it's clean over there. Even man, we, though need it's, to, we need to have some meetings, man. We need to have meetings, but it's a lot of shit that you got to do that's in place, but we're not doing it. One thing I know about white people, they have meetings. Dog, white people will have meetings on anything. Like, we don't have enough meetings. Like, we don't have enough, like, the most meetings we have, and, and, and that's something that I always say why the park is so important. At Garetti, at Joe Brown, at um, Harrell, at... Um, McDonald Park at Willie Hall, McHugh. We meet for for sports. We meet every day. Like when you playing baseball, you playing track. When you uh, when you running track, when you playing football, 
basketball, you meet every day. Mm-hmm. So we we forced to have meetings and we and, and we come in and we talking about teams and shit, but then we start talking about other shit. Then we start like like right, building so that brotherhood up again. Those meetings are there. They got the them school board meetings. Uh no, nobody ain't going nobody to the- go to school board meetings. <laughs> nobody even watch that shit. You don't go to it until it until the shit hit the fan and now you're really pissed off and they done made a decision and then we show up in the masses. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You like, gotta show up in the masses before then. But you have to have meetings. You you have to as a community, we have to have community meetings to address our shit first. As a community, we need to get together and get our shit together. I think that's gonna start with us, bro. Well, like, it's lo- slowly but surely in no, New Orleans, but people's out in especially in New Orleans. I now see a lot of people that are starting to work together. You dig? A lot of people, are, they starting to get, you know, once we come together, we are better together. Right. However, it ain't that many people I see doing that shit. It's starting. Uptown niggas and downtown niggas working together. They getting it. But what they doing? Working together to do what? Cause I don't see like I see a lot of I well, see a lot of no motions. Community shit, yeah. Like like I see a lot of I see a lot of motions. I see a lot of people um doing what they've been doing, just waving the flag and doing that. But I never seen nobody actually do something. Like I never seen nobody. Which I look at it almost like it's my fault because I feel like, I feel like the little bit that I did do, I feel like I could do more. You know what I'm saying? As for like stepping up into the community and just forcing a lot of people's hands. You have people like Byron Cole in the community. He boisterous. He saying like, like, and I admire that type of shit. Yeah, I do You know too. what I'm saying? Like, because at one point I was like, we, his approach is so, but now I it's get brash, that shit. But deep inside, I think we all wish we had that courage to just scream out what the fuck we feel because a lot of times we worried about what other people thinking what other people saying so I heard some shit Kanye said that same shit yesterday real shit Kanye said the same shit what he said it was always on a you know how you think some shit to yourself and it might be crazy but you you don't have the courage to say that shit out loud right them two niggas got the courage to say whatever the fuck whether it's good bad however it may be perceived to others they gonna say that shit right and when they go to sleep, they're going to feel good because they didn't worry about what another motherfucker think when they said that shit. How you feel about 50 Cent making a um, documentary about Soldier Slim and um, Magnolia Shorty? And I, I, I seen um, Van Lathan interviewing Successful Five and um, None But Fire Records. And so, you know, it's a real thing that's happening. I seen the flyer. Oh. Uh, if 50 going to put his hands on it, I assume it's going to be pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. I would like to see, I'm going to even say it out loud, but uh, yeah, it's cool. I've been hearing a lot of people um saying that they hope they explore like all the sides of Slim. Like, yeah. N- not just the rapper. Slim, Slim the bigger story. Uh, what they going to cover on Shorty? Well, Shorty, Shorty bought a lot of the shit. A lot of what we use today, like, she like a pioneer of that. And I'm so, just ignorant to Shorty. Right, right. Like, she a real pioneer to the whole bounce culture, the whole, the lot of the cadences that that that, yeah. that was used. She's she's almost like, um, she, 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 was, she was the one that took the torch from the Cheeky Blacks to Miss T and, like, really took the torch. Like, she was 14, 13. Performing at DJ, she was she was like real active in the club scene. She she was she was signing Cash Money, um, her her signing to Cash Money, she that never overshine who she was. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like she still was doing her local thing and going to tour with Cash Money, and she never really had a, like a, a national hit. Mm-hmm. That hit really with Cash Money. It was more like real, real local yeah. hits. She took over the streets. That she did her own marketing, her own promotion, her own team did that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't rely on the Cash Money um on machine to do that. She kind of created her own noise, her own buzz, 
and she and she buzzed all the way until she passed away. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, she a real pioneer when it came to like what what women the strength of women mm-hmm. in bounce culture represented. And she really took that torch and 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 laid the way for the Reedies, the Vineys, the um. I hope you know they cast from somebody from New Orleans to play them roles. But I don't know if it's like a movie. I don't. I think it's more like a documentary. I don't oh, know if it's man. a. But yeah. I. But I. I would imagine they might do like some little <laughs> movie roles to kind of reenact some shit. I would hope. But depending on what that budget like, like it'll be probably oh. cheaper just to do a straight documentary nah, going son, interview. Fifty t- turning shit into a fucking series. He taking stories and he. He getting bags. He gonna put that bitch on for seasons. Let's I don't see, see that being the documentary. Let's see. Cause I'm gonna tell you one thing about New Orleans. All right. Mm-hmm. You don't want dig too much. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that that that. <laughs> fat fat and all that <laughs> coming back to L on the L. Yeah, right. I I, I seen this. <laughs> I seen this on Instagram, you did. <laughs> fat fat and all that coming back on the L. And when when I when I um when I read that, right? Shout out to my nigga Jugget. Yeah, Jugget, Jugget. Ain't he out the West Bank? Maybe not. Oh, no. No, I'll be claiming everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so all right. So fat fat and all that, like I'm I'm scrolling Instagram. And I think I seen it on Neutral Ground page. It's coming right? back on TV? All right, let me let me explain it, all right? Oh. I'll make it funny right quick, all right? So, <laughs> Fat Fat and all that coming back on L. Yeah. So, like, I'm scrolling Neutral Ground page. I see it's it coming on. And then they show, like, the direct TV thing. Mm-hmm. And they show that this was coming on. I think it was on Fox or some shit like that, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't, it, was, it, was a, it was a channel, right? I ain't see a fucking direct TV box in like four years. So like it fucked me up. So I'm like, what the fuck is on? Yeah. <laughs> like, the first thing that hit me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I ain't watch TV. Like mm-hmm. everything I watch is on like apps and Just regu- YouTube. Is on regular Fox? I don't know, bro. Like it's on it's on direct TV. And it's coming back in rotation. I don't know was I they didn't say much about it. I ain't really dig into it because how you feel about Fat Fat and all that? Like where where do where do it fall in the importance of New Orleans media and platform building? As far as platform building, and I was on YouTube and I was watching some shit with Bow Wow and he was talking about bringing 106 and Park back. Right. Because those avenues no longer exist on TV for those who do watch it. Right. Um, So for artists, they can't get on TV like they used to. Ain't the MTVs, ain't the VH1s, the BETs. What else we had? The Box. We had all type of shit where artists could actually, you know, put themselves on. And then when Fat Fat, you know, he exposed a lot of local shit, and he had some of the shit that was hot. That was dick. a Q ninety three. Um, that was a Q ninety three. Um, platform. No, huh? I, I think that was the son. You know, that was before he got the Q ninety three. I believe. See, I always thought that was on the Access TV shit. I used see, to be on that bitch a lot. See, I never knew. Like I, I always thought it was always a Q ninety three entity, and, and I and I think that's a, that's a big problem that a lot of creators should um, think about when getting in bed with big entities because sometimes the entity could kind of overshadow who you are, who you are you know what I'm saying because I'm a kid watching this shit and I'm and I'm watching the, but I've always thought fat fat and all that was a Q93 entity mm. I never knew so I never I never knew that yeah it was, I never just, knew it was for him he started that all right so how Juggy ended up getting in the mix it was his show all right so Fat Fat and all that is Juggy's show. Yeah. I don't I can't say it was his show, but he was definitely the host for every fucking show, Fat Fat. And so all so that. he was the host. So was he already with Q93? I think that was before Q93. Hmm, that's something to look into. This, this was years I, ago. I didn't know. I didn't know none of that, though. Like I, I never really knew like the background of um 
Fat Fat and all that. Like, I never knew how how far I ain't, I never really thought about it. You know, I'm, I'm, that's something that's something to look into. If anybody that know about that, reach out to me. And give me the history on Juggy and Fat Fat and all that and Q93. Because I always thought it was just one thing. I always thought it was, all of them coexisted together. Always, mm, it went from there. That's this his story. You know, he went. He started that. Then I know it's a lot of shit because I don't know him that well. Right. Uh, then he went to Q93. Did his thing at Q93. And uh, now he then he went to No Limit and was doing some work over there. Now he P manager. Wow! And he managed like the NBA um, crew or the NBA crew, like OG three three. I know he a manager. I thought That's, that was Fee. No, no, no. I'm thinking about uh, Rond uh, Quando Rondo. That's his name. Yeah. Quando Rondo, yeah, he with feet, but well, I thought NBA Young Boy was probably with feet too. I don't know about that. I know Rondo for sure. I think NBA Young Boy was. I I, I know feet. I know feet was um has had some handling with NBA Young Boy. I I I, I could almost say that as a fact, but um Juggy managing OG three three because I seen I seen him in a bio, so I know that. But I. Shout out to Juggy. Shout out to Juggy. Yep. Shout out to Q93 Boys, Wild Wayne. I really wanted to talk about um, the Wild Wayne effect when it comes to New Orleans because he gave such he gave so much to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Like he he's almost like the face of the city when it comes to media. Mm -hmm. You dig? And he and he gave so much. You hear about some of the stories, some of the negative things, some of the um the the payola side of it um that's radio I, the, and uh, do you think how you think that way out like we talk a, a lot about the sands of time mm -hmm. right and you look at wild wayne now he's he's older he's still got the voice he's still got the talent um it's crazy how you bring up a lot of shit i was recently watching because ricky smiley was talking about the pioneers of radio in alabama right and then I, I started thinking to myself, I was like, damn, well, who would be the pioneers of radio in New Orleans? Uh, you got him, Uptown Angela, uh, C.J. Morgan. Uh, who else we had? We had... Fuck, we had so many, we, dude. We had a few like, of them. We, uh, I, I would hate to not name one. Right. But through, throughout the radio stations... We we didn't had a lot of legends, and a lot of them started in the clubs. A lot of them started as um as notable people, like uh, in in the street first, like your, your DJ Poppers. You know what I'm saying? So like, <sighs> what was your question? You think they should have did no, more for no, the artists? Or? No, no. My my question is, when you weigh out what people would call payola, right? Which payola. Is when the no limits and the cash monies came in with these big deals, right? So, like, think about New Orleans. New mm -hmm. Orleans is the place of independent labels. Mm -hmm. Like, we had so many independent labels mm -hmm. at the time. Like, when a bust down got signed, <laughs> when uh, um, when all these artists that got signed, mm -hmm. right? All of them came from independent labels, like the Mobile Joes, right? Uh, the Take Full Records. When No Limit and Cash Money both got their bags and they both came back to the city, right? The first thing they did, well, Get you used to hear the used to hear partners in crime on the radio, you used to hear Miss T on the radio, you used to hear um all the local celebrities that was buzzing in the clubs on the radio. Once once No Limit and Cash Money got their bag, all you heard was No Limit and Cash Money on the radio. Mm -hmm. You stop hearing Take Full on the radio. You stop hearing Mobile Joe on the radio. You stop hearing all these classics that we grew up on and we love. You stop hearing them on the radio mm -hmm. because they didn't have the money to keep up. To keep up. So, so a lot of people on the street side, they blame that on Uptown Angela. They blame that on the Wild Wayne. And when they, when they address it, they get the door slammed in their face. So, so as much as they bought to the game, right, mm -hmm. um, and still bring into the game, mm -hmm. I always wonder how they um, rationalize that in their minds or 
how do we rationalize the good and the bad of that situation? Because it kind of killed the local market. So you you seen Cadillac Records, right? Right. They was doing that shit. You seen the Motown story with Barry Gordy. They right. was doing that shit. Right. That was just the business of radio and they fell into that fucking business, you dig? Right. So I won't put that shit on them because that shit was going on way back before time. It's just the price got bigger, which they didn't control either. Right. Um, that's the business of radio. I won't put that on Angela. I won't put that on Wayne. But they get a lot of slack because there's New Orleans and we we such a small community. Mm-hmm. Like, we such a small community that anything that we do... It's almost like you know what I'm saying. Like they put they, it's, it's almost like they they're the face of it. So you know so that's why I think out. they get a lot of us. Like one, I don't know if most some artists know it. On Sunday nights, they got this thing on Q93 where they you know they put on local artists. You ever heard that shit? Mm-hmm. So one, you got that. Mm-hmm. They, the, I think it come on right out the um. It, I think it come on right out the. Uh, social shakedown I don't know when it come on I just know it come on And you can tell When it's local night Right So one That opportunity Still exists Right When I was doing The managing for another artist And we was trying to get A song out on the radio I called Called around Talked to a couple of DJs That was popping on Q93 Or whatever radio station At that uh, point And I found out How much it was To get the fucking song On the radio And I looked at the artist And was like Look We get on now is how much it gonna hit? So, so if you paid to get on the radio, mm-hmm. right? Why like, wouldn't you? I, but my thing is, I think you think they priced higher than what the fuck it is. Too. No, I, I just, I don't know. So you could pay to get a song on the radio. So how much? If I wanted to get a song on the radio, start about twelve hundred to get a song on the radio. Real shit. <laughs> See? Well, why you don't hear more songs on the radio? Why niggas ain't going up and get off their ass and going to get this information? <laughs> a lot of niggas ain't looking for this information. You ain't looking for it. You ain't tried. Mm-hmm. You waiting. You just put that bitch out and then hope that everybody was going to hear it. How many niggas that I work with, I'm like, man, I can't wait to put this bitch. That bitch going to be a hit. I was like, what you going to do after you put out? Man, watch that bitch grow. Hmm. Crazy as shit. Well, I've been hearing, I've been hearing that it's kind of hard to get in them rotations. I don't know. When I had a song that I was working with an artist, it was a bounce song, and still to the day, I would call this motherfucker a hit. But I had put up X Y Z, and I told him, "All right, it's your turn to put up X Y Z." Right. Woman caught stealing three hundred dollars worth of meat, and the baby was stealing too. The, the reason why. I had to think about this shit, I'm, right? I'm so, not laughing at I'm looking at your fucking so, face. <laughs> so, on a news article... It's hard times out there, bro. They show, the news article, they showed the baby with the Standing bags the <laughs> walking out the door at a save lot right? The the employees at the save lot snatched the bags from the baby, right? But they didn't get the lady, right? And they, and they put in the news article that she pulled off in the Mercedes Benz. Right, so the debate started on in a comment section on, on Benjamin's room on Instagram. Um, would you go? You know what I'm saying? Like, what extremes would you go to if you didn't have money to feed your kids? Like, would you? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't have nobody to ask money from, or would you bring your kids on a heist with you? You know, like. The debate started, you know what I'm saying? Like, some people saying, yeah, I do the same thing, but I wouldn't bring my kid. But maybe it was some spur of the moment shit. Maybe she, was, maybe she like, got all this shit and was planning on paying for it and didn't have a card. And it was like, man, fuck that. Like, I ain't about to leave this bitch without this meat. The only thing I hear is the bitch was driving a Mercedes. Maybe she a business owner, right? But let's rationalize this shit right quick. Like, let's play devil's advocate. Maybe she's a business owner, right? That's in debt, right? And and couldn't and didn't have enough money to fucking um 
get her meat that she needed to flip for her but business. You better start perpetrating with this car. <laughs> but the car could have been an old Benz. You know the news, they just say it's a Benz. Niggas riding around this bitch with fucking 2002 Benzes and shit. They going to try to say it's a Benz. Maybe some, you know what I'm saying? Like They going to just say it's a Benz just to make it seem bad because that's what media do. Yeah. You dig? But what would possess a person to grab... Be, uh, uh, not I, I know it would possess a person to grab three hundred dollars worth of meat or produce because they had two stories. One said it was produce, the other one said it was meat. Right, so Gosh. we never got to the yeah. bottom of what it, exactly it was. But I can see somebody doing that. But to do it with your child is very very risky, and to leave and to like leave your child because you had to leave your child for. Away. Them to be able to snatch the bags from your child and not be able to catch you. So your child had to be trailing with some bags in her hand, which she probably, I wonder if she was at the checkout because she had bags in her. I don't know how this shit happened, though, but that shit is crazy. But would you still to feed your kids? Like, would you go to that extreme? Or do you feel like they got other ways you could probably do it without having to go and you know, snatch them out of the store and run? Me, the person that I am today, I know too many ways to make money. Holly Grove, you. Yeah. Never been nowhere. Right? So, peep this out. And, and I hate to put this shit out on, on camera. I used to steal shit back in the day and didn't have to. Right. He's just a little thief. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I ain't about to say nothing bad about <laughs> But uh, calm, you know, she come back to you. you know, <laughs> fucking do? right. So, uh, you motherfucking right. It's not even, son, I just did shit for the thrill or for a laugh or the, you ain't gonna do that bitch out. You think, you think if you steal something because you need it, you think karma gonna come back on you? Nah, when, when you in need, you hungry. Niggas got to, you got to do what you got to do to feed your child. So I'm not going to shit on that story at all. Right. But you're driving around in the bins and you left the, the child, at least. Make sure you got the child if that's who you're trying to feed. That's, I don't know, dog. Like, that's crazy, dog. Like, so <sighs> the shit you see in New Orleans news is, is you're going to see some some wild shit. You yeah, so because I stayed in Holly Grove, I tried Holly Grove shit. Right. On a national on 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 we got two national stories that's that's really, really, really buzzing right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get I wanna get to this one, then I'm gonna get to the other one. I'm gonna I'm gonna save the other one for last, right? Um Roe versus Wade. Um, and I'm gonna read exactly what I looked up Roe versus Wade was. You you did you like at first at first uh, hearings of it Did you know exactly What they were talking about Cause I really Like it was some shit That I heard at, in school before But I never really even always, Knew what the fuck it was If anything We always heard Roe versus Wade But I don't think We was educated On what the fuck it was Or how it fucking Affected we, us We just know The two names put together Right So I'm gonna read this It say Roe Ro versus Wade Was a landmark decision Of the US Supreme Court In which the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, now they're trying to overturn Roe versus Wade, mm -hmm. right? Um, all the states are coming and um, saying that mainly Texas is the, is the, is the real push behind this because they've been on some you can't have abortions mm -hmm. right um there's a bunch of men white men always making rulings on the bodies of women mm -hmm. and this 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 thing been like going crazy online black women white women families you know what i'm saying like a, like a, a mother a, a parents could be charged with murder if you go get an abortion, mm -hmm. um, and and it's affecting white the white community, they say like 
more than it's affecting us. But it's going to affect us because of our population. We, you know, we were like 15% of the United States mm -hmm. population. So it's going to affect us because not only that, we are the ones we make up most of the poverty in the United States. Our communities are already falling apart. Right. And now you're making a ruling that not only takes away the decision making mm -hmm. of women, it's is is providing more substance to the already um prison system. That they kinda always find clever ways of putting us in. Mm -hmm. Whether it's child support, you know, whether it's you know what I'm saying, all these different avenues, tickets. Like if you person. a black man, you gonna see jail. That's that's a guarantee. You you you're more likely to go to jail for a ticket. You're more likely to go to jail for a police stop. You're more likely to get shot Hold at on. a police stop. You you like you have 150 ways your child will go see the jail. Mm -hmm. You one day your child, if you have a black male child, one day he gonna call you and say, "Oh, I'm in jail." That's fucked up. But yeah. I it's and right. and white white kids don't have to go through that. So now even more so now you telling women, that's deep. and that's going to affect black women more because we already talked about how how young people are more inclined to take risks, mm -hmm. how the young mind is more undeveloped, and they already attack our black people young minds like with every avenue through entertainment, through um, even when they try to go the right way. And go to school and go to the army. They getting raped. They getting murdered in weird ways with, from these people with these different little agendas that mm -hmm. you not thinking. You just trying to get away from the hood. Mm -hmm. And then you get attacked by white America and racism and all these different things that you probably didn't even know about because you never got out the hood where right. black people been hating you right. your whole life. Now you in a world where white people hate you too, you know? And now you you telling women that they can't what they can't do with their own body, and you not a woman, <laughs> right? And and we have really no say so in a lot of. A and lot you of came it. from a woman. Do you think voting is a thing? You you think us not voting and not being in into politics like that play a big factor oh, yeah. in them doing that oh, type of stuff? Because they know that's how they gonna get with, and that went back to. Her. The school shit, bro. Cause we don't get up and vote. So they know if we don't get up and vote, a lot of shit gonna get passed as long as they keep their allies, they they team happy, their team gonna come out and rally and support that shit. Right. That's where they fucking us over at, son. And that's why I said we they need fuck to over have us on community paper. meetings, dog. Like so if we have community meetings and we make let's say the music box studio ballot, right? And we didn't did all this fucking homework. And we got people in our group that's doing the homework on who we should rally behind or who we should get to, you know what mm. I'm saying, to, to push up and be our representative of this area, this district. And Eventually, that's why I think we should, you know, start pushing this show. You know, one we're going to put on for the city, let you know about the city, but we need to start having these people like that for the community. Um uh, that's going to speak up for the community. So we definitely need to start getting them, you know, up in here so we can help people see, you know, those people. Because they're not being seen or heard like they need to be. Only one you can be seen and heard is right now is Byron. I would love to well, see it's a few a, more. It's a few more, but uh, they're just not getting that, that huge push. But I think Byron is all, always going to be like one of the loudest voices in the room. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to see... Like in, in some type of parallel universe, see what would have happened if Byron Cole the one for mayor. I, because I know one thing, like, this shit would have been lit. Like, it was almost like, I compare him to, almost to like a Trump because he like a wild card. They, they, they represent two totally different polar universes, but they, the they, they both wild cards because ain't no telling what Byron Cole going to say. And you gonna have you have your comb Byron cool, then you have your motherfucker. You got that motherfucker who just be observing, and you know this bitch about to fucking say some shit that's about to be crazy. That's but and then you got once he fucking unleash, 
is like, but <laughs> you can't put the fucking toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> Once he unleashed, this nigga unleashed. Yeah, and that's that's what's gonna keep him from ever being mad. I would love to see him like in in politics, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking on issues like this because he's a father of I think he said four daughters, right? And um, it's just interesting because you have Mayor Cantrell, who is a black woman right well, he definitely should be on the council board you need to start small he he shot big go ahead and get yourself in the door and work your way on up right uh, but he'd be good for his community for sure but i'm just surprised because um i didn't i didn't particularly hear american trail kind of um uh, speak on the issue of of the women you know what i'm saying because by her being a black woman she have a daughter that's a black woman um, yeah, how that affect us as a city? I would no, I would love to hear. Her ain't opinion no telling who she in bed with, and how they feel, and if she say something, how that will affect her? Because that's how politics work. And, and giving credit, I don't know if she said anything about Again. it. I just didn't. I just didn't hear it on the full front. But that would be the reason she wouldn't. Right, and I, I totally understand it. But it's it's gonna get it's gonna get critical because um in in pre production for this subject right um me and the gang we talked about mainly mainly Tenway Cool's cool because he always the loudest voice when we speaking about um anything as for like injustice with women children he always gonna be the loudest voice in any conversation right mm-hmm. um and he was speaking on the fact that the baby is never for the man like. Your DNA might say, yeah, this is your baby, right? But the baby is never for the man. The baby is always for the woman. Mm-hmm. And how um, evil it is for men to even decide whether a woman should or shouldn't have a baby. Because of that fact, of, like through through, fin- through the financial side and security side, we look at it like it's a 50-50 product, mm-hmm. right? But in reality, the baby is for the, the woman. woman. That's her baby. She is inside her body. She had to protect it inside her body. What she ate, the baby ate. And what she drank, the baby drank. So mm-hmm. they they are actually one product. And she mothered that baby. Mm-hmm. And she going to protect that baby more than anything on this whole earth. When you and that baby fall out, she going to be on the baby side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's a... It's an unfortunate thing. I think it's something that our children going to have to fight, and we're going to have to fight and put the platform down to give them the tools to be able to win that fight because that's going to be a fight of their generation. <laughs> and and, I, and and when we talked about it, I said um, I compared it to the seatbelt. Like when I first heard the seatbelt law, I was like, what the hell? Like you mean to tell me if I would want to go through a fucking window or not or take that fucking chance with my life I can't and I get a ticket for it and go to jail for it it save your life no it save your life but but it's a rule but if you crash and you and that motherfucker stuck right can I sue the fucking city for making me wear a fucking seatbelt that I got stuck in and couldn't get out the car Mm-mm. Cause some motherfuckers would rather just take the chance of bitch. I might jump out this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want no seatbelt restricting me mm-hmm. because motherfuckers might start shooting at me in traffic and I can't grab my gun because the fucking seatbelt strapped and fucking. You know what I'm saying? Like we live in fucking Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but it, yeah, it starts from small things like like that where they start putting restrictions on. Your your driving body, your you know what I'm saying. Then they start hitting your reproductive organs, and next thing you know, men can't pull out. Mm-hmm. You, like if you pull out, that's like fucking abortion. <laughs> that's like pre-abortion. <laughs> if you pull out, so motherfuckers gonna be taking you to court because you pulled out. If this Fuck, f- a condom is like fucking abortion, <laughs> all this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like how deep down this rabbit hole we gonna go? Into controlling the reproductive systems of it, of us. They are gonna keep going until they, they can't, bro. Like this virtual reality shit. Once that shit really get to where the fuck they wanted to go, shit gonna get ugly. 
I don't know what fucking movie that was. I think that was Demolition Man, and uh, they was ready to have sex or whatever. He got in the machine. And yeah, the, <laughs> they talking about that shit today, my nigga. And he never touched each other and shit. They just in the machine experiencing sex through fucking virtual shit. We let them keep going, and we keep uh, letting them get away with whatever the fuck because we won't vote. It's coming. That's what I wanted to say earlier, but I had to hold that shit. Man. Oh, son, a lot of shit that a lot of shit they didn't put on the TV thirty years ago. We see it today. We see it today. Shit that was in the eighties. Back to the future. We in that bitch. You got your Netflix account on. I seen. Um, <laughs> what that shit we was watching? The our father, our father, our father. Um, I wrote down, and that go back into what you was to talking about. I wrote down exactly. Um, Donald Klein, Doctor Donald Klein. Mm-hmm. Um, a doctor who. At the time, had blue eyes, blonde hair, right? He wanted to preserve the white race, working at a um, sperm bank. So when the fathers came in to give the, um, or the donors came in to give the the, the specimen, mm-hmm. he was tossing it out and putting his own specimen into all these fucking people. Mm-hmm. So now he got all these brothers and sisters out there, and the lady found out by 23 and Me. DNA Mm -hmm. that she had all these fucking brothers and sisters right so that was some weird shit especially coming off the subject we just came off of because that was another flip of the coin that people were saying that is this a thing to just try to preserve the white race because we all been seeing things online where it was saying like the white race only have 50 to 20 50 because of the dominant genes of melanin, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So it make it make some sense, you know what I'm saying, to not have abortions based off of that fact. And watching that just make it seem like he was like a part of Donald. It seemed like he was like some, a part of some type of cult or some shit mm-hmm. that had this ideology to preserve the white race for whatever reason that they must feel like. They were going extinct or the black people were, the numbers were Mm -hmm. multiplying too much. That shit weird, bro. We got to start getting up and vote, bo. And we got to start having those meetings. How the fuck you going to vote a nigga putting fucking Uh, sperm? (laughs) And like I said, it's, yeah, it ain't, (laughs) but it's the shit that they doing, you know, to help. Whether it's voting, uh... Cause a lot of people, I ain't like a lot of people our, who don't vote. It's not because it's not because it's just we don't get nothing in return. We always see it work in their favor. Yeah, like they they never they they never get what they expect out of voting. We only did it one time, and that was for Obama. Not though, the sperm bank dude, the coat, the no abortions. So 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 what of all these women pregnant at the same time and they find out, oh Check this, out. Keep on. this dude did this, but we, none of us can't get abortions. We can't even abort all these fucking children that we don't want because he had some type of fucked up repro- re- reproductive gene mm-hmm. in him. So now all the children that he gave bodies to all have this shit too. Yeah. Cause he wasn't even. <laughs> well, that's the fucked up part about it. If you get raped or whatever, you're forced to keep that. That's sh- the main thing about. And then one of the people that's in the forefront of of this thing, this motherfucker sent his side bitch to go get a fucking abortion. <laughs> that's the type of evil motherfuckers that we and they still gonna have as a community to when while eat. our children holding us cap, hold, kidnapping us. Holding us fucking captive in our own city. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers doing this type of shit. Why nobody looking? This on to our second <laughs> fucking national <laughs> fucking topic. Young Thug Gunner indictment. This nigga Rico Propola, uh 
He getting everybody. Dog. In every city where you have music as aimed at murder and talking about the realistic side of a lot of situations, they you have them. a you have a Rico going on right now. Yeah, the act of Rico. They coming for all of them. New now. Orleans, um, Compton, um, all five boroughs in New York. Constant. They keep a Rico going in New York. Florida, North Carolina. Oh, like, New Florida niggas for sure. Alabama, Mississippi, the whole South. Texas, they got Ricos going on active, and if they're not active right now, they will be active in the next one, two or three years because these these things are things that they build. Like they build this shit over years and over time. They have they even have computers that will tell them who should kill who based off of who beefing with who. What's the probability of? This person being killed and who should be the killer? Like, it ain't helping that you gonna hop on the beat and sprinkle little fucking crumbs for every fucking body. That don't help you. That don't help. But you don't think that's what sell the music, the realistic side? Well, yeah, that's what's selling the shit. That's what's selling the shit. Cause look, I seen Pastor Beatty come out and say that um. Bobby Shamurda is a government informant based off the fact that you just did all this time on a Rico, right? And his next single is about killing everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> like, he killing everybody in his next single. So he was like, how could you... But this the thing. He can rap about that shit and no longer do it. He didn't, he didn't did his time or whatever. So well, why would you want to? After doing so much time based off of songs that's now, now, that. now we can talk about it. We ain't got to be about it. We done been about it already, and it's been proven. Now I ain't got to prove it no more. Now we're just going to talk about it for a clout. I say this. That's very suspicious. They're like of him, especially in this climate, bro, because like it's been proven that they on the internet. Like if you look at any indictment that come from any rap group in any of these cities, mm -hmm. New Orleans included, you will see things in that indictment that came straight from Instagram, straight from, they even go back to MySpace. Mm -hmm. You dig? Like MySpace, it, like, because a lot of these beefs are old as MySpace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they go back to all the social media sites, Facebook, still up there. Yeah. And they looking in these messages. They looking in these comments. They following you in these ghost pages and all this type of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because we live in a clout era where you don't want to just murder somebody. You need the credit for murdering somebody. So you need to let somebody know, right? Um, I think that's just the perfect soup for indictment. Mm-hmm. Where you see this going? Where you see this being headed at? You niggas better change that music. You think you think hip hop? You think that type of hip hop gonna be banned one day? Again, or should be banned? In New York right now, uh, they are trying to ban drill music. So ain't where it's headed, nigga. That shit ain't already started. They trying to drill, uh, stop that shit. Few and that's a ago. black that's a black man that's, that's doing a black man. It. And it's and it's a black woman that's on the head of this well, that's the DA that in this black indictment. Man, that black man with Young Thug and Gunner. Well, it's a black city. Right. So but that black man in New York, you know, his son had to play that shit for him. And because I'm younger, you think that's I, I still so think look, of, This is where I met with the shit. Even though I'm young, but becoming an old head, I still listen to rap, you did. Right. And sometimes when I listen to music, I be like, damn, these niggas tripping. Like, why is you putting that shit out there? It's, I don't like all of it. I see how it's entertaining and catchy, but I don't like where it's going. But if you kill somebody, right? Let's say you kill a lot of somebody's, and they kill some of your people, right? 
and you on some like we talked about hip hop being like you said uh, when Cole was here, you said when six nine um want to die, right? And I said that's hip hop, right? Like that's hip hop. Everybody taking a chance when you go to a hip hop show. The fans, the cameraman, the promoter, the club owner, the artist. So like, I, like. You know, like, how okay. do you rationalize that being part? Like, that's part of hip hop, like the violent side, like almost well, no, like wrestling. B- because, so I, I want to say that, son, that ain't always been hip hop. Within the past couple of years, that's what hip hop has been going to. So, what is going to become after this? It's going to have to go back to where it was. We're going to have to start all the way back over again. So next we're going to have to start talking about the white man fucking over us on some M- NWA shit. You think because they on some, they like these youngsters, they don't. Like when you start bringing up that black man shit, like these youngsters like on some shit like, you know, like a lot of them ain't really fucking with that shit. That's how they end up being so hard on each other Well, they like fuck each other. Uh, the lane is open for Mo Kendricks, J. Cole's, the niggas that's going to speak some real shit. Need another Tupac. It's a lot of boys that's still missing in music, but right now it's just saturated with the rap gangster shit. Cause that shit always was cool. You gotta think about the whole cowboy. Yeah, but like they made a whole genre off of cowboy movies, off of white boys, and sometimes they even had black cowboys. Well, they had real black cowboys, but they started inc- incorporating black cowboys into the mix. But during the western times, like. Them movies was like cult movies. So look, Ronald let's, Reagan let's even about, ran, even got, was president. Yeah, this motherfucker was in cowboy movies. Actor, yeah, well, that's what worked for him. And army movies. So like, even in white culture, the violence was always a part of the cell of the culture. It's just that those people wasn't always expected to to really emulate that in real life. And and for some reason, we need our people who do that to really be that so for it to be authenticated man we need Katie. to go back to the I don't know bro rap went all hip hop and gangster and shit or was it I don't know what because 50, it what? always was a rebellious music so when 50 and them came out what 50 was talking about I can't even think about that shit or something. and the wangster and shit it was Going off How to Rob was his fucking single. Yeah, it was Robbing always, it all was the some fucking gang- industry yeah. niggas. It was gangster shit. And like, even when you think about a lot of hip hop, always was a rebellious type of music that rebelled against the whatever the authority was. I don't know, bro. I just, just what we evolved to. I wonder what's the next. Something gotta be next. Oh, shit. Something gotta be nice. Once all these indictments and shit come through, like a lot of that shit gonna put a lot of that type of talk on freeze, mm-hmm. which we rapped under those conditions. Like they we used to rap about like you used to hear rappers rap about some real shit without getting indicted because we come from the time where we ain't talking on telephones, motherfuckers wasn't jumping in pictures. So, like you pull out a camera in the nineties. You might have to fight somebody. So you now pull out they're finding different ways to take over everything, set. my nigga. So now it's the woman body. Uh, they're trying to take away our right to vote in certain places. Uh, the school system, the music. they trying to get their hands on everything so they have something to say. And if we let them, they coming for everything, bitch. Man, bro, like it's like as black people, we are under attack. We gotta start. Oh, we always these been meetings, under attack. Bro. We gotta we gotta set up a meeting and I don't care, we set it up at Joe Brown, you dig, and we meet and we just gotta we, 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 we gotta do something, bro. Like we got to. Like we under attack. Like this whole podcast we've been talking about black people under attack. Mm-hmm. You dig the black woman under attack, the black man under the attack under attack, the black community under attack school system under people attack. gotta steal the fucking eat cause it's shit high gas went gas. up to full fucking 65 <sighs> congratulations to call they went crazy in their graduation I mean, so every time I see that I'm like damn 
I wish I graduated from that motherfucker. But they ain't doing it in two years because of COVID and all yeah, that type that, of shit. So this was the first that bitch, time, and that bitch was rocking. I was waiting then, for it. I, I wanted like, to end on that shit. I bet they're about to do that bitch, and they did that. I was like, oh, oh. I just want to go to a car graduation. Duh. Somebody graduate from car that I know, please. Shout out to all the graduates. We're going to end on that note. We're going to shout out to all the graduates. Um, Shout out to everybody in the city. Welcome to the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no clue. <laughs> Man, we we look. We gonna get together as a community and actually make a real change in the city, and everybody gonna be a part of it. And our kids gonna grow up and grow old and have big old families, and we gonna be able to talk about how shit was in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We gonna be able to talk about how we brought back New Orleans East, how we, you know what I'm saying, came together as a community. And and made a real future for our children. Cause right now, at this point in our city, um, if you have an adult, if you got a daughter, you gotta be prepared for your daughter to be um, sexually manipulated. Mm -hmm. If you have a son, you have to worry about your son being in jail and dead. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, is that's just a reality that we face in our city. Um, this episode five. Six. Oh, this episode six. Six. Damn, we moving along, dog. We moving, bitch. Damn, this episode six. six. Benjamin's room. Yeah. KP. I'm Benjamin. KP. You already know, and we out. Damn, dog. Episode six. That's a little hump. If I be that hump, ten that next hump. You hear me? Hit him up, bitch. Damn. That's crazy. Don't feel like. It. Don't feel like it, bro. It really don't. Um, I think we hit a lot of good subjects, especially when it comes to like the community shit, dog. Cause like people gotta take that shit serious. Bro. Like you got to, bro. We can't not take that shit. Serious.